listeners. Hello out there. First episode rolling into 2019. Welcome, or hey, hopefully, welcome back. If you haven't heard other episodes of the show, browse our library and discover the Morgan Oco. We have now heard from over 50 people from the Northern Colorado community, and we've also had other guests from outside the area. You never know what you'll find on the show. Now, on to today's episode. Today, we have three guests, all members of a band by the name of Safekeeper. Safekeeper was originally the sole child of self-expression, coming from Zachary Visconti, who started the band and wrote all the lyrics and music. Today, the band lineup now includes Ben Ward on guitar and Corey Wright on the bass. Their drummer could not join us for the recording, but he was there in spirit. Before starting the interview, let's hear a clip from Safekeeper. The end of today's episode will also include a second clip from a different song off their new album, On Sludge Summit. Enjoy. The following clip is from the track Got No Wings off Safekeeper's album On Sludge Summit. Okay, here I sit in person around a kitchen table with the members, current members of Safe Keeper, and I sit here with Ben Ward, the lead guitar. Hello. And Corey Wright, the lead bass. Hey, hey. And Zachary Viscani, the vocals, rhythm guitar, and I assume the founder of Safe Keeper. Yep, that's right. All right, so thank you all for joining me, and uh, to get us started, um, how was Safe Keeper born and where did it come from? A childhood friend of mine named Matt Skorka, um, was unemployed for a while, and he just flew out and like lived with us for like a month, and we wrote all these songs together and recorded kind of the skeletons of them, and then he moved to Stockholm. Oh, snap. So he was like the original drummer of the band. So was he on the original recordings, and then he dipped, and then but then you kept it going? Yeah, I guess it kind of... So I played in another project called Twin Vessels, and it started as... Um, that band is all instrumental, um, and so Safekeeper kind of started as my outlet to keep writing lyrics. I used to write lyrics for a band I played in in Lincoln as well, called Walk by Sea. Yeah. And then uh, Corey and Ben, how did you all get involved in the Safekeeper fold here? <laughs> Zach has been, uh, well, I don't want to say leading or pioneering the community <laughs> of, of DIY house shows, but um, he's been instrumental in a lot of house show movements in Fort Collins recently. Mm. I started playing at the shows because Zach and I are good buds and he just said, Hey, like come play at my house and I I have a separate project. I just play really sad, soft, acoustic <laughs> like folk folk singer songwriter stuff. Ambient folk. Ambient folk, yeah. Or dream folk as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Forget about dream folk. Dream it's folk like is like the thing that some, some people have said. And by some people I mean one obscure blog on the internet. <laughs> That's all it takes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, then Zach basically said, We're gonna play one show for this band. We're gonna play one one show that's it for this this band and so we all i think last february was it yeah coming up on a year now coming up on a year ago we all played in this one were you did you play you didn't know that oh no, 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 you, ben, no ben didn't you play you took that video though yeah but, yeah but ben was shooting video for this <laughs> this one show and then we Played this one show it was supposed to be one day. We sold two sheet, two t-shirts, right? Yeah, we had a friend just draw on some t-shirts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Sharpie Three, just over there one making them. Yeah, during the show, I bought one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and, and, and his one. brother bought the it other. Was, <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't. Yeah, and then the and then it was were. supposed to be the end of Safekeeper, and then it wasn't. Yeah. Question mark. So then Brandon <laughs> Ramos, who mm-hmm. like plays drums pretty actively now, he is like the other guy in my other project, Twin Vessels. 
he went away for like three or four months and so i was just really restless during that time it was like fuck it we're gonna oh can i say that oh absolutely (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) but we just kind of picked up safekeeper again as a means of like trying to still do something music wise trying to still play out and be involved in the scene brought ben on board for our second show which was Mm -hmm. june of this year been playing a bunch of shows Corey hopped back in at some point yeah so i'll play bass i guess (laughs) <laughs> pretty much out of the conversation yeah. <laughs> and so people at home uh listeners of the show may not know what you mean by like a diy venue so you mean host uh, yeah. the show at your house yeah so here where we're located right now we call mouse house and it's just a venue that we put together we like have a pa and guitars and amps and stuff and so we originally started doing it at my old uh residence spooky island where the record was um, recorded. Yeah, we would just, like, get a couple bands from the community or, like, friends that I had that were on tour and uh, just throw little, like, small uh, community shows. And so that was kind of the idea behind it, and I just wanted to, like, bring artists and musicians and generally, like, just creative people together to kind of network and see cool music. And how has that been? Is it just cool? People get to collaborate and meet each other? and Yeah, definitely. I don't know. I feel like these guys have both been to many of them that we've played and just hosted. I feel like they've always had a really good feeling about them. Just like an intimate party. That's, I mean, that's what it is. It's just a party with friends and then we meet new people and we all have similar interests and it's a very organic feeling. Yeah, fun until it gets shut down or until... <laughs> I was going to say, how do the neighbors feel about this? You know, we had a really good run for a while yeah. where we were just chancing it. I never really talked to any of the neighbors or anything <laughs> like that just because I didn't want them to say no and then we mm. couldn't do it at all, you know? For our last show that we had here, Ben got to... <laughs> He, he suffered toe to toe with a neighbor, the or wrath, the or wrath. An older lady neighbor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She was not happy. She wasn't. <laughs> she come over and give you a few choice words, or yeah, <laughs> more than a few. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah and she yeah. was just really upset, and she, I, I think she had known. You know, she was like, "This has been going on for a long time," and you know. It's, mm-hmm. But that was the first time it was brought up, and we've actually talked to some of the... Zach has talked to some of the other neighbors, and they, they enjoyed it. They liked yeah. hearing the music. Oh, that's kind of nice. So, you know, yeah. it's, you win some, you lose some. Do you ever have neighbors come over? Um, that was really the only time, I think. It was only a negative. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. so people were just yeah. enjoying yeah. it casually from their own yeah. house, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, these neighbors really like it, though. I'm going to invite them. We're planning on talking to said neighbor and that show was our first non-friday or saturday show too mm. which may have had to do with it i mean <laughs> we're always done by nine thirty though like, oh, okay consistently yeah. every time yeah. but it gets dark at like four now <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. That's true. um i'm gonna talk to her and i think we're gonna keep booking shows but we also have an art show coming up uh in january so we do a bunch of stuff like that just trying mm. to get people together and you all have some formal shows coming up at venues yeah Yeah, we're playing February 9th is the next one. Uh, We're going to be playing over at Pinball Jones Campus West. Very cool. With the Beavs, right? With the Beavs Beavs. and a couple other bands. Well, before we started the recording, you all were regaling me with some tales about staffing and just picking up the pieces, playing a certain instrument on a certain (laughs) night, and just making things work. Um, I would like you all to walk through that because I feel like a lot of our listeners tuning in may think, okay, like, Safekeeper, they've got, everyone has their own instrument, and that's who has played it since it started, but that's not the reality for a lot of, you know, bands starting out and and just piecing together, and... Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Even even if you look through, like, our pictures, they're like, we haven't even been together a year yet, but there are, like, different faces in every single set of pictures, like, little (laughs) videos that you see. And so that's fun for me because I've taught these songs to like probably 10, 12 different people by now on different instruments. And it's cool too because now like we can just pull from our community, you know, Mm. everyone knows the songs and people are willing to hop in and that's been nice. But this is the first time we've had like a pretty consistent lineup, which has been Ben and Corey and then Brandon Ramos. 
and you all just feel like you've you vibed, you meshed, and no one's moving to Stockholm, and things are going to work out. <laughs> yeah, not, not for now. I think so. uh, it'd be cool, but <laughs> it'd be cool if we all moved to Stockholm together. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what I really <laughs> that's yeah. Idea. Yeah. <laughs> could keep it rolling. Yeah. So I want to play, and I'll probably ask you after we're done here about which song, uh, clip, or two I should I should play for our listeners, but. Um, I want to discuss just the Safekeeper sound and how you stumbled upon that and, and kind of what that vibe means to you. Yeah, that would be interesting to hear from you guys. For me, a lot of the writing came from a place of like listening to a lot of 90s indie rock, which is what like Matt Skorka, the Stockholm boy, and I <laughs> grew up listening to together. I, I think for me it was like really an attempt to capture the the kind of songwriting that uh, means the most to me and, like, is the most impactful to me and then just use that as a vessel to, like, kind of grow the sound into what it is mm-hmm. now. To me, I mean, I started with, you know, along with Corey, we started playing live and we weren't really involved in the recording process, but it's interesting for me because I grew up playing music and I would always um, record music and I would always do that by myself and always want to have like a finished product and this is way different for me because it's just like it's just live like I've never done like performance art in Mm. any sense before um so for me like this is just it's it's loud it's pretty heavy like energetic music and it's just it physically feels good for me to play it and that's why I like the sound and that's what resonates with me and I think a lot of other people yeah it's just fun to perform yeah Yeah. definitely Yeah. yeah I hold that same that same kind of balance where it's odd. It's it's kind of an odd dynamic because I play bass in the band, which for me is the least technical um, instrument I've ever played. Um, so it allows a space of like I like I said before, like I'm I'm typically a singer songwriter. So all of the focus and the attention and all of the effort and the promotion um, and everything is on me. And when I step into my safekeeper space where Zach is just, like, cuddling me up. (laughs) (laughs) My safe keeper space. Yeah, it's like a safe space. Um, I get this opportunity to just be rowdy and, like, let my body experience music, I think, Mm. more than anything. Because I think there's this thing that happens when you're a singer-songwriter, and Zach has been in this space before, um, and Ben has been in this space before, where all of us, like, create our own music. But um, you, you end up really giving a lot of your heart um, and giving a lot of your mind to an audience. And then Mm. your body has to remain very stagnant. Um, And there's this really cool thing that happens with Safekeeper in the live performance element. And because it's so like visceral and because it's so like full body, you get to like step into this space of, of almost freedom. It feels like it almost feels like I don't even feel that the show happen. I'm just existing. And it's, and it's rowdy, and it's crazy, and there are times where I just want to yell, and, and there's times where I just want, like, <laughs> I want to, yell. like, rip off all my clothes and run naked through the woods. <laughs> yeah, I too feel that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, which, I don't know, is not the worst feeling in the world, no, but it's also not. not, like, socially appropriate. Uh, <laughs> and you keep playing the bass. Yeah, and you keep playing the bass. It's just not yeah. really practical. Yeah. <laughs> When you're playing live, it's not really practical to yeah to become naked and then feel the urge to be in the woods. There, there are these textures that Zach has created um, that I've never been a part of before, and there's the the lyrical content too that I just feel so compelled towards, and it's just like a really fun product to be a part of at the end mm. of the day. Yeah. Uh, so Ben and Corey, you both have created. Um, Stuff on your own, Corey. You might have a band on the side as yeah, well. Yeah. Uh, ben, just have created things before, yeah. but now you all <laughs> come together and you become the pieces of this of, of like a separate project. You know, is that yeah. is that kind of scratch? Uh, you, I think both of you have touched on this a little before, but I imagine it might scratch a a different creative part of you to get up there with friends and be able yeah. to collaborate and and show people. Music, even may, even though it may not be um, lyrics or it may not be a melody that you wrote, it's still mm-hmm. something you get to share with each other and other people. Ben Ben's gonna try to downplay it, but he is one of the best visual artists <laughs> in Northern Colorado. Um, yeah, just in case you're, he's definitely ben, up there. Ben P Ward, look him up on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there he is. I got an Instagram plug, but yeah, but no. What do you think about that, Ben? Yeah, I mean, for me, I kind of touched on this earlier, but 
I've been more. I shouldn't even have mentioned that I used to make music because it was when I was like in high school. Like, <laughs> oh, like, hey, hey, fucking around. Yeah, gonna go <laughs> searching now. Yeah. Yeah. Anything, but anything counts. A better example is I. I'm a visual artist and I do photo and video, and that's something for me. Like it's a medium where you're always fine tuning, you always rewatch and look at it mm-hmm. and like try. Let's see, what if I do this? And what if I do that? And it's just, you know you always like scrutinize yourself super hard but with this it's just like we have one shot you just play it through and you mm. don't watch it ever again and you know oh you all that. don't video yourselves and play I mean, back I guess we have right. done a live stream but you yeah. know it's, it's just so different it's just like yeah you know it's performance art art versus something that is right they're just way way different yeah I don't think it's the focus yeah. of it too you have like immediate response with music too yeah, where yeah. it's like you really feed off the energy that um it at least we do. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like yeah, we do. Um, really feeding not you get like this immediate response of like how people are feeling. Whereas mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. with like photography, I feel like you don't often probably get to see that response at all. Yeah, yeah. like people just see your work and you just assume that it's yeah, well received yeah. or whatever. And as a, as a singer songwriter too, it's like the quieter the people are in the room, the more. The more like, yeah, like, like the more opposite, you get, right, yeah. which is really weird because then you f- you leave and you're like, I feel like there was nothing happening. I I don't think there anything happened, <laughs> but then actually people were digesting what you put out in the world. But yeah, it's like it's like a very internal process. Yeah. Whereas huh. with like Safekeeper, mm-hmm. it's like fairly external. Yeah. Except people are moving and I don't know, it's all weird. Yeah, it's yeah. fun <laughs> sometimes. But then other times you'll be at a concert or a show with someone and they're not doing much and then you ask them afterwards and they're like, I absolutely loved it. Yeah. Yeah. I was swept away. It's like, really? You look like you were dead. Bored. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. And with, and with small shows, I mean, you, that crowd really matters and, and each in, and, cause you can see each individual person and they're right yeah. there. And so totally. you can see how that definitely factors off. Do you have people coming to your home shows that you don't know, strangers that are like, oh, these people are in my house? <laughs> I've had like a surprising amount of people that we don't know at all. Like either they were brought by another band that like they like or Corey played here. We had like a real close knit cold show in the garage yeah. with like pillows and blankets. Everyone just like sat around <laughs> on the ground and uh, I was like running late after work, like trying to get home. <laughs> And I walked in and I didn't know anybody except for Corey, and his girlfriend, and my wife. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, okay, I can make this work. It's fine. Yeah. It's fun. I'm not shy. Yeah. No, yeah, but there, I think there are people who show up to all of the venues that we occupy, whether they be like the house show or DIY venues or like the actual set in stone venues that. There, there's a, there's been a couple of people who have just found the music and come out to the show. Yeah, that's happened a couple of times. Like some really interesting folks that are, like their their stories are crazy, um, mm. and how they found Safekeeper. It's like how how the hell did you find <laughs> this man? We barely exist. Yeah. <laughs> we barely exist on our own. Yeah, so the fact that you found us and. I was talking to someone on the way over here, and they asked me how I found out about you all, and I honestly couldn't remember. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. We just slip into people's uh, <laughs> Yeah, I know I messaged you through the Bandcamp page, but how I landed on that website, which I had never heard of before, I could not begin to tell you. It's I love perfect. it. That's yeah. great. That's right where we watch it. We have a really good marketing team. Yeah. <laughs> really covered. Yeah, marketing yeah. team. Yeah, as, if, as if there's all these people who are working. Yeah. yeah. Now that you all have a more, or at least for now, a more stable lineup, do you feel like the next time songs are written, it might be a collaborative effort? People might have some more? Or, Zach, do you think you'll still be man in the helm? Um, I'm trying to figure out what that looks like right now in my mind. Like, yeah. part of me wants to be really controlling and, like, have all these specific ideas. But um, I think this month, it, like, until that February 9th show, we don't have anything going on. Oh, that probably made a huge noise. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I think we're going to spend some time just, like, hashing stuff out. I've got a couple, like, fragmented songs that I need help with that we're definitely going to, like, just, I don't know, yeah. trudge through and uh, get some cool stuff. And I'm, like, pretty excited to have these guys be a part of the writing process, too, just mm. because that's, like, that's where a sound is really crafted and becomes... That'll become our sound now that we're all part of that writing process. So, well, Zach is like such a conceptual writer, and he writes from this place of like really like raw honesty, and it's it's something that I think 
when you are a songwriter that it's really hard to let other people into. Mm. Um, and that's where, it, like, he says, I feel like I want to be controlling, but it's your art, you know? It's like it, mm-hmm. that collaborative effort is a very tender space. So I think we're, we're working through the logistics of that. Yeah. Yeah, if, you, if it's coming from, you know, your own mind and if you're authentic and your soul is in it, bringing someone into that mm-hmm. fold and also staying authentic can be hard because it's coming, it's come from you. I mean, Zach, it's come from you for yeah. I don't know how many years. But now it comes into this collaborative space, and you still want it to be authentic. You don't want it to, to ring false, but at the same time, you don't want to be exclusive and not allow everyone to have a voice. Yeah, totally. It's got to be a hard balance beam to walk. Well, and to some extent, I mean, just like any project, it's going to evolve in its own way. And I think that's like what I love about looking at a musician's career start to finish, too, mm. is you see, li- or you hear, I guess, lineup changes. You hear nuances that like really really evolved how a band formed in the long run and i think as an artist i also like find a lot of validity to that like this is a different lineup than just me and matt you know writing Mm -hmm. in the duplex like this is a band now and we all contribute to it and i'm excited to see how that pans out and to figure out how that meshes with with my like own personal like goals and vision Mm. It's the same band name, but totally different band as, as time goes on. And yeah. it's you know, almost foolish to think that it would stay the same, you know, like in a vacuum forever. Right. It's a good perspective. I wanted to mention on, on your online presence, you said specifically it is sad, abrasive music mm-hmm. for sad, abrasive people. <laughs> Care to elaborate? Yeah, I think um, for me in my life, uh, mental health has like played a huge role in both like my songwriting and just like existing. Um, oftentimes, sad people are people who just have a really open heart and welcome in a lot of like troubles um, from the world around them. Can tend to have these like maybe not like lash out, but there's like a an inherent like abrasiveness that comes with that sometimes. Mm-hmm. And I like to think that's like the pocket of my heart that this music resides in for me. Like it's the part of me that is mean to people, but doesn't want to be, doesn't mean to be. And it's just trying to like, feels like it's trying to like hold the whole world up. Yeah. I don't know. A lot of safekeeper for me has been about like, like codependency and like managing Um, Just having a very open heart, if that makes sense. You know, Mm -hmm. feeling like you have to keep everyone in check and keep everyone safe. Mm -hmm. Even though, like, I don't don't need to. (laughs) I shouldn't feel that way. But it's kind of an outlet of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And I think that speaks to what Corey mentioned. It's uh, it's personal expression. and, And definitely hearing you talk through that and i think our listeners will agree when they hear a sound clip of your song but i definitely feel exactly what you just said from listening to your music Corey and ben what got you all into deciding that music or you know being musically inclined or actually going out and and doing something because some people think that it's easy to just get involved in a band or start producing or making music it is not it takes a lot it takes a lot of time effort and, and heart so How'd you all get into being musicians, so to speak? That's <laughs> <laughs> huge. Well, first off, thank you for the recognition of the like how much time Process. and effort, and it, it does take a lot. Yeah, because yeah. I'm sure this yeah. is all your full time jobs, right? You're making, <laughs> you're, you're making yeah, yeah, a of huge yeah. salary off yeah. of these projects. Sixty k. Money for everyone. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, live music is something I've always wanted to do, and and really, the starting a band has always been kind of an intimidating idea for me, but mm. I think relative to a lot of bands, at least for like me and Corey and probably Brandon, this is easier than most, because we weren't involved in writing the music at all, it's just like, hey, you know, Zach like sent me five songs, and he's like, hey, can you like learn these? <laughs> for me, that's way easier, and then it was kind of this like smooth, tr- steady transition into the band, as opposed to having to like write music together and like do you know it was it was pretty easy for for me relatively speaking yeah. did you learn just by audio or did you have tabs or it's just audio i think yeah. for the most part yeah. yeah yeah ben was especially surprising where like i don't remember what it was i was getting ready to leave for, for california to visit my family for like two weeks 
And then we had like one day to get together somehow with him and our other friend Cade. And I sent them the songs and was like, if you don't know these, like when we practice, it's okay. Just like listen to them a bunch. And Ben came and I felt like he knew all of it already. <laughs> it was like two days of like time to listen to these songs and yeah. he just show up, showed up like ready to go in my mind. <laughs> I feel like Ben feels otherwise. <laughs> I still had some stuff to work out. Yeah. No, it was, it was cool in that same way to, yeah. to find that. I mean, it's almost like someone else's voice that you're just learning how to speak. It's almost like memorizing a speech or something Mm. where it's, where it's this process of like this person, this thing has already been written. It's already, I just have to step into it. And that's really nice. That's a really nice space to join a band where Mm. it's not like use all of your creativity to create this thing alongside me. It was Zach had already been so creative (laughs) he had already used like all of the breadth of creativity um and said just learn these things and then Mm. like and then you'll you kind of end up finding your voice in that which is uh a really beautiful way to join a band i've never joined a band like that it's usually just been this clunky awkward process and usually like very like i mean because it's all sad people very abrasive (laughs) (laughs) usually yeah like (laughs) All this like really awkward tension where nobody knows what, whose voice to trust. Um, but it's really cool because Zach is one of the hardest workers I know, and so yeah, no, I, I'm gonna keep. I won't let you. I won't let you live it down, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, the only option is to no, I'm right sorry. Now. I'm just. I'm just gonna. <laughs> yeah, Zach just puked in the corner. Um, that rate that sludge. <laughs> um, sludge. Yeah. <laughs> He made all these parts, and so we just sit in them. And I mean, he alongside a cast of really brilliant folks. It's weird that we're sitting behind a mic, I think, talking about it. Because it's not really our thing yet. But you make it come alive for people in person. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so that's true. a lot of times people will buy an audiobook of their mm-hmm. favorite book, and they sit down to listen to it. And they'll turn it off 10 minutes in because they can't stand the reader. They can't stand the person who read it. Yeah. And a lot of people are purists about audiobooks and they say, if the author's not reading it, I don't want to buy it. Yeah. And so there is the, there's the source material, but then it's also bringing it to life. And, and how do you authentically bring that to your audience? So I think that is a big deal for all of you, including yeah. Zach. Yeah, I couldn't have, I definitely couldn't have brought Safekeeper to where it was without these guys and a bunch of other people. Like, so that's. Yeah. Equally important piece of the puzzle. Yeah. So you have a new EP out called On Sludge Summit. Yeah. Right? And then where can people find that if they are interested in listening? Uh, it's on Spotify, Apple Music, Bandcamp if you want to buy it, mm-hmm. or download it for free. You can do that on Bandcamp also. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to buy it, we'll take your money for sure. Uh, and then people checking out the episode, if they want to come out to the show, you said it's February... February 9th at Pinball Jones. At Pinball Jones. Yeah. yeah. Campus West. Campus West. Campus, yeah. Campus West. Is that a different Pinball Jones location? Yeah, there's two. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's uh, there's this whole neighborhood of, like, Campus West close to CSU's campus. Okay. San Elizabeth, yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's just west of campus. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, we can definitely post about it on our Facebook and Instagram as well when the time gets closer. But uh, thank you all for sitting down and joining me for today. Yeah, thanks yeah, for having course. us. And anything on the horizon besides these live events? Any new songs uh, stirring, or are we uh, focusing on On Sludge Summit for now? Yeah, we'll be performing a lot of On Sludge Summit with a few, hopefully a few uh, new ones sprinkled in here and there. Be trying some new shit. Stuff. <laughs> shit out. Stuff. <laughs> yeah. Some new shit stuff. Uh, yeah, we'll be trying a bunch of new stuff out. So. Yeah, and hopefully your neighbors are kind. Yep. Hopefully. <laughs> Keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> As promised, the second audio clip featured from Safekeeper is the track Kind Cannibals off their new album On Sludge Summit. Enjoy.
Do you also enjoy the music used here at the More You Know Co? I want to shout out my good friend Russell Isaac Long for always giving us those hot fire tracks. Are you looking for a little bit of bonus content in addition to the episodes of The More You Know Co? Check us out on Facebook or Instagram at The More You Know Co. Original, right? Don't worry. We'll be back soon. Until next time, peace!